Welcome back to Cat Jam in the Car. Today we have a special guest, Walter Jones. Welcome. Hey, thank you very much. Happy to be here. So glad to have you. Oh my gosh, <laughs> Walter. So Walter Jones is known as Zack Taylor, the Black Power Ranger. The original Black Power Ranger. The original, yes. so the OG one, right? The OG, OG in the building, but OG in the car. <laughs> hey. <laughs> so the started in 90, 1990. 93 is when the show aired for the first time, and we did the pilot in 1992. Uh, and uh, then we, once it was picked up, we filmed about 40, 40 episodes before it was even aired. So. Wow. Uh, so it's over like 30 years now, is it? 31 now. 31 years. We're in our 31st year. Wow, you still look the same well, from the from the film. <laughs> thank you. You gotta be a secret, right? Maybe it's a superpower. That's I like to say it's cocoa butter and positivity. <laughs> I love you that know? cocoa cocoa yeah. butter. Yeah, cocoa I love butter it. for the skin, positivity for life. Yeah, do we say like a you know black don't quack? Hey, Asian no raisin. <laughs> yes, we are. We we are very lucky, right? Yeah. Yes. And the full actor, that's great, right? So you still get mm -hmm. lots of part of play young, like young character. I'm um, sure. you know, it, it it would seem to be that way. I mean, I, yeah, I guess I do. I still get mm -hmm. work playing young people, but it's not as mm -hmm. um, consistent as it used to be because casting agents want to hire people that are the actual age. So they never play me, hire me to play my age. I just wouldn't mm -hmm. fit that role. Um, but. Uh, I think in the entirety of my career, I've always played younger. Yeah, because I feel like you have this very young energy in you as well. Yeah. So when you were casting as the, uh, you know, the black, or the OG, we talk about OG Black Ranger, how old were you? I was 26. So you were 26, but the character is like... The a, character was 16. So, I mean, it's quite a long before actor play like 10 years younger, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Well, if you, if you can. <laughs> yeah, because I yeah. saw some like I kind of like did a bit of research. I watched that. Okay. And uh, you looks, you know, really young. Like you look like sixteen. Well, ideally, when you have a, a production mm -hmm. and you have kids in the production, uh, you want them to be eighteen or older so that you can actually work them for the proper amount of hours. If they're mm -hmm. actually really kids, then you are you you know you're stifled by the rules because mm -hmm. you can only work kids for so much time. Right. So when you were cast back then, you were still like a minor, right? No, no, no. Sixteen. Oh no, you were twenty-six. I forgot yeah. it. You were twenty-six. <laughs> I, you, the character is sixteen. The character so, is sixteen, right? So yeah. So were you Screen Actress Guild already? No, no. no it was non-union. It was a non-union show. Oh, so it's a non-union. Which is part of the reason I left the show in the first place. Oh really? Yeah, because we did the first season non-union, uh -huh. then we did the second season non-union. And they were so excited about the success of the show that they decided they were going to do a movie mm. with 20th Century, so 20th Century Fox. Sorry. Mm -hmm. And um, I expected that the movie, you know, a main, a big major feature film would be Union, and they were planning to make it non Union. And that's where I was like, okay, I, no, it's too much. It is such a huge project. How can they make it non Union? You that's what I would wonder. I was like, right. how is that possible that you can make this non Union? and not pay, you know, Screen Actors Guild wages, at least for the film. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. Um, but I'm sure you still get paid pretty well, right? Because it is such a, like, phenomenal, like, worldwide. Everybody know about this. No, no, we were paid very poorly. Really? Very poorly. I would say we were, we were minimum wage uh, in regard to actors. I mean, as you know, an actor makes his living off of not only what he's paid for the day, but for residuals in a professional yeah. level. And we got no residuals and no merchandising, no nothing. So. Oh, you guys didn't get him like no. a residual? No. Wow. So it was very unfortunate. We were paid for it by episode and not paid very well. Oh, wow. I, I, I think maybe that's why they make it as a long union, right? It's kind of like yeah. the 
and Long. to maintain it so that they can, you know, get people and, and have them work for basically nothing. Right. Because yeah. this thing still airs, right? Oh, yeah, it still airs. It's on Netflix right now. Oh, God. Yeah. Imagine you, you get it like a residual. That would get oh, paid yeah, a lot. I would, be, I would be very well off. Yeah. And it's uh, after 30 years, I'd be, yeah, I'd be doing really well. I would have, so, I would probably have, uh, I would have uh, family wealth. You know, I would have generational yeah. wealth. As you well. would have generational yeah, I would have generational wealth. I'd be able to pass down the wealth that I earned over this 30 years to my family, which is unfortunately mm -hmm. that I, I'm not able to, but. Yeah. Um, but that's okay. I'm still living. I'm happy and. The wealth that I get, that what I do get, the benefit that I get is is the wealth of love that we get from our fans, and mm -hmm. um, the wealth of the experience of being um, being positive in the lives of so many people. Right. I think also it's about like you build a legendary character, and yeah. people know about you. That's like more than money can offer. I feel a lot, lot, lot of times. Yeah. I mean, usually yeah. that comes with money. <laughs> right, but you know, you're thinking lots of people have money. They are not actually well, well respected. They're not loved by people. And then it's you, what would you choose? You choose like have lots of money, but like people don't like you at all, or would you choose like be well respected and loved, but you don't have that much money? Oh, I think that that is not one doesn't depend on the other. Really, I mean, like you know, you can you can have an amazing character and be wealthy because mm -hmm. of it. You know, or you can have a horrible character. You know, you could be the the enemy, somebody, somebody people just didn't like, or or they don't really find you to be a great actor. But you are also wealthy, or you can be not wealthy. It's, you know, it's mm -hmm. the ideal is we're artists, and mm -hmm. as an artist, you want to be compensated for the art you create. And if anybody's gonna make any money off of off of what you created, it should be you, as well as the producers. Yeah, exactly. Especially for this series, like such a legendary series, everyone know yeah. about it. Yeah. But at least you you still get to do lots of appearance, right? Yes, yes. I mean that is again, you know, the benefit of this mm -hmm. um, is because we have so much love, uh, because there has been so much merch that has been created over mm -hmm. the thirty year period that I'm not getting paid for. Um, but I do get to the fans. Uh, the the fans do love it, so it's I am beloved. Mm. And I do get to sign autographs and take photos, and people are still interested in getting to know me and see me, and that's right. awesome. So, um, after you played that character, so how long you were in the show? Like, it's like a couple of years. I did right? the first 85 episodes, which was about two years. Yeah. 85 episodes? Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, they really the make. The show was on every day. That's. Uh, yeah, Monday through Friday. And then we worked Monday through Saturday because on Saturdays we would do. Mm. Our ADR or looping, you know, the, mm -hmm. the voiceover work, um, and then eventually it was it was airing on TV six days a week. Yeah, that is such a popular show. It's like yeah. everyone knows about it. Yeah. So um, let's talk about the auditioning. Obviously, we forget about the money part, right? Right, right. right. <laughs> let's talk about exciting part: auditioning for actors. Yes. <laughs> so, do you still remember like the auditioning of, like? Sort of like a process for this one is such an important character, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, is it the audition really complicated? Uh, it was complicated in the sense that they were looking for somebody that had a, you know, a certain set of skills, um, mm -hmm. especially for my character because I developed my own form of martial arts, which was called hip hop keto. So mm -hmm. it was a combination of martial arts, dancing, gymnastics, and, uh, and, um, yeah, martial arts, gymnastics, and dancing. So uh, they wanted to put hip hop into the show and make it something that would cater to the kids. Mm -hmm. So uh, when I auditioned, they asked me to um, to do everything. I had to do I had to be an actor one, and mm -hmm. then two I had to be able to do martial arts. I had to do, be able to do gymnastics or you know those kind of things, and then I mm -hmm. had to be able to dance. And then I had to put all that together to make it into something that had not been yet been created. Mm. So you are like natural, kind of like good with all the physicality stuff, right? Because mm -hmm. I think this character depends on that. So did you start like a martial arts when you were a kid? Yeah, I was. Uh, I studied Ishimuru when I was a kid. Um, I was. Uh, I grew to be a, a brown belt. I studied to be a brown belt. I competed in tournaments, and I was the mm. Pee Wee Michigan State Champion. 
wow. when I was a kid. Yeah. So that was pretty cool. Um, mm. So I, I probably only studied maybe four or five years, maybe four years. And then, you know, as a teenager, I wanted to play with my friends. So I yeah. kind of stopped going to karate and just kind of hung out with my buddies, you know. But the skill set always stayed with me. Yeah, I feel like lots of people don't know as actor, you need to have lots of other skills, right, at Thailand. People just think, oh, you just act. Yeah. And they didn't know you have all the skills. You dance, you do gymnastics, yeah. you do martial arts. Yeah. I, right. I do as much as I can do to, to work. Yeah, right. Yeah, because yeah, if I'm not working doing one thing, then I work doing another thing. Mm. You know, I've done everything. I've done every job uh, from bar mitzvahs to singing telegrams to dancing in videos to, you know, um, being a choreographer, uh, I taught salsa for a number of years. I, oh, you did that too? Mm -hmm, yeah. So you're like a um, professional dancer? Yeah, I danced salsa, bachata, kizomba, zouk, um, merengue, mm -hmm. foho. Like, I dance a lot of different styles. Not all, you know, not all professionally, but I am able to lead and follow in a, in a way that's uh, comfortable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, you need to get on Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> I would love to be on that show. Right? Yeah, yeah, I would love it. I think I would. I've, the thing is, is I have, um, I have a, a lot of dancing. Um, I have a great dancing background, but I've never studied ballroom, so that would be a completely new style for me to conquer. And um, you know, there's there's lots of technique involved, so it would be interesting. It would be a great learning process. Yeah, I'm sure because you already had all those kind of basic training and the skills built yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah. So when you go to audition back then, like you know, um, what's the most like you know important thing you remember that make you do besides like martial arts, gymnastic? Because for this character, like you know, what's like most uh, memorable thing you remembered? For for, for the for, for the auditioning. For Power yeah. Rangers. For yeah. Zach. For Zach. For the character Zach. Uh, well, I would say uh, the acting is you know the acting was it was fairly simple. It was like. You know, teenage kids. Uh, I had been a teenager, so I knew how to be a teenager. Um, that wasn't very difficult. You know, the the script wasn't um, something that 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 was uh, that forced me to, to go into the most amazing uh, or intense emotions. But I would say that it was the physicality. It was because that was unknown. That was like I would go on the set and. Uh, Let's say we were at a park. In fact, there was a fight I had on a park bench, mm -hmm. and so they said, "Okay, you're gonna, we're gonna, you gotta, you're gonna fight some putties right here. Uh, we're gonna put you on top of the park bench." And I thought, "Well, what am I supposed to do on a park bench? Like, mm -hmm. I, how do I fight here? And and I'm like limited in space. I can't run. I can't jump. I, mm -hmm. I can't, you know, I can't. What what am I supposed to do? And so, you know, we." We, I got together with some stunt guys and we figured things out. We said, uh, you know, he's gonna attack me from this side. I'm gonna dodge and jump to the uh, to the, the the sitting area below, you know. And then I, the putty would come. I would jump from that side to the other side and I stand on top. I do a spin and I hit the putty here and I flip this guy that way. And then I come down, mm -hmm. sit down and evade a strike and I pop back up and all this, you know, physicality. It was more like something you would see Jackie Chan do. You know, um, um, something like you know, where, where you just, you you took the physicality that I had and 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 the ability, and we just made it fun, you know, for kids. Yeah, because this character is really much about physicality, like you mentioned. Yeah. That. So you talk about a stunt. Do you have to do your own stunts? Do you have a stunt yeah. double? No, I well, uh, I never had a stunt double on Power Rangers, but in the mm. suits, um, mm -hmm. at that time, a lot of the footage was Japanese footage, so. Um, then I did have a stunt guy. And later on, I did have stunt guys that would do stuff in the suits, because basically because the demand was so great for us to do um, the the on camera stuff. Like you could put anybody in the suit that was capable to do martial arts or whatever. And of course, the style of the Black Ranger in the suit was different from the style of Zach, the character that I played. Mm. So he, the Black Ranger, didn't have as much hip hop keto. I had a lot of hip hop keto. Um, but occasionally you see the, the Black Ranger do some something, you know, like, was it, which had some, some dance style to it. And that was my buddy. He was actually my roommate uh, at the time. His name was Danny Wayne, and he stayed on the show for quite some time. And uh, I, I remember him adding some, some texture and flow to the Black Ranger in the suit occasionally, yeah. Wow, that is such an interesting experience, right? 
So, um, like all the thirty years, like you, I mean, obviously, like people recognize you as Black Ranger, right? right. So, like, do you guys travel worldwide? And I'm sure, right? Because the show is oh, such. A yeah, the show is in forty countries, and I, I get to do comic cons and travel and meet fans in, in various parts of the world. Um, I've been as far as Malaysia. You know, I've, I've traveled up there to meet fans, and uh, I've met fans in, um, in like Ireland, Scotland, and I'm going to Liverpool soon. I'm going, I've been to Australia. Mm -hmm. I've been to you know South America. You know, parts of Mexico and. Uh, Chile, I've been to Venezuela, so various places, yeah, lots of wow. places that have my so Brazil, some of my biggest fan bases in Brazil. Really? Yeah. And why Brazil? I think, uh, I don't know, but I know that there is a, uh, I mean, I just know there are a lot of Brazilians that love Power Rangers and specifically love my character, maybe because they can relate, you know, mm. there are people brown skin or and, and, and rhythm. You know, so, uh, you know, like you have uh, in, in Brazil, you have capoeira, which is another form of dance that's based, uh, um, another form of fighting that's mm -hmm. based off of dancing. Because when uh, capoeira, the way the capoeira was introduced is they were, um, they were practicing fighting, but making it look like they were dancing. Mm -hmm. And so they were able to get away with the skills to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, I took some of my, my, um, motivation for doing hip hop keto from capoeira because i had to compare like well what what if, how, how does this work that i um everybody's fighting but I, I i add dance to what i'm doing so why does that make sense if i'm in jeopardy but i thought about capoeira i thought about it as being something that was more about um deceiving people's eyes and their um you know giving them making them look one way but hitting them from another way or about evasion and about disruption and about uh, not being able to, you know, just having the agility to not be found in a moment, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's this is kind of like the things money kind of buy, right? You travel around the world and all the experiences are so rich. This journey, being a Black Avenger, for oh, yeah. yeah. No. So, do you do you think they're gonna do more of those? Like bring you guys or rent a cast back, do something, like. I don't know. We'll see. Well, last year we did uh, Power Rangers Once and Always, which is a movie we did mm -hmm. uh, with Netflix. Uh, it did really well. It was number eight globally uh, in the world uh, on Netflix. And uh, it was the first time I've been back on the show in 28 years. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And I went back and donned the suit and did Hip Hop Keto. And um, it was very well received. So I, I don't know. I don't know if they're going to do something else with it or if they're going to leave it let it stand as a one-off. Um, I'm not sure, but I hope there will be other opportunities, and I believe there may be because mm -hmm. um, Power Rangers is not stopping; it's just changing, it's evolving. Right. I mean, yeah. you still maintain the shape, right? Because yeah. like, so do you? Do you like uh, kind of reunite with some of the cast member? Like, do you feel like everyone's different now? Like, uh, uh, yeah, we're all very different. We're grown. <laughs> we're all adults with families and kids and living in different places and you know right. uh, involving in business and so forth and so on but the heart of us is the same you know mm. uh, we when we're together it's it's almost like cousins that haven't seen each other in a while you take off where you left off you know mm. you pick up where you left off it's like oh hey we're, we're back you know so mm. um, that's 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 amazing I love that we have a we have a, a friendship based not only on our friendship but on the experience that's very only common to us like knowing where the show started from the beginning and where it's grown to at this point mm -hmm. and the fandom that has come along with it and the love of the fans the love that we are given and the love mm -hmm. that is spread through the world based off of uh, you know our teachings the teachings like people grew up with um, the life lessons that came from Power Rangers, and one of that was like to enjoy diversity, enjoy love, like to to be protective, to be kind, to you know help heal the world in, in different ways. And mm -hmm. so um, that's something that that was inspired from us and has lingered in those people that grew up with those messages, share them with their kids, and then their kids are still you know. So it's it's wow, mm -hmm. it's, it's ongoing. I love that.
Right. So like, like see their kids, like those fans' kids, are still watching the show. Like, see, like you, you have kids, right? Yes. So like, do your kids watch this? My kids don't care. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's so funny. I heard lots of like actors say their kids yeah. don't care about their parents. Like no, because they're... I'm just dead. You know, like I mean, yeah. I, I I won't say they don't care, but they don't follow the work wholeheartedly. They haven't watched every episode of Power Rangers. Um, they are very aware of who I am. They've seen the character. They've seen mm. you know bits and pieces. They've seen episodes. Um, they're just not like the fans. They're not fans. They're my kids. So. They, yeah, you're just a dad, right? I'm just their dad, yeah. yeah. So they're like, you know, uh, that's cool that you were famous for that, and we're proud of you for that, and we're proud of the work you did, but we're, you know, you're just our dad. Yeah. So. Maybe they, their friends were thinking, oh, my gosh. Yeah, their friends are like, can you get your dad's autograph? And they're like, yeah, <laughs> My friend wants your autograph. Um, oh, really? Yeah. So their friends would be like super like, pumped, right? Yeah, yeah. They, they were for their other kids, you're like superhero. But if, yes. for your own kids, you're, you're the father. I'm the father, yeah. Oh. I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not somebody. Well, I think for other people, for people that don't know me and don't have a relationship with me, I am almost out of reach. Do you mm. know what I mean? It's like one day I can meet him and be great to like, and it's a moment that they, would embrace and be, you know, super happy that they got. Whereas with my kids, yeah, um, they assume they're always going to see dad. Dad is here every day. It, it's, they take me for granted. <laughs> yeah, they they don't see you as superhero. Right, right. <laughs> I'm super dad. That's what that is. Super dad. That's yeah. that's good as well. And so, um, Walter, you mentioned you 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 are from Detroit, right? Yes. Like Orange, from California. Did you start your acting? Career back there, or you moved to California for this? Well, yeah, no, I started my acting career in Detroit, but like doing theater and um, and those kind of things. I I was in the Detroit Street Theater Group. Um, that was something I, where I started, where I was doing um I was doing like street theater uh, in the summer times as a summertime job, uh, going around to festivals and so forth, and so on with my troupe, and we would entertain the people you know at, at um, festivals and functions and that was fun I'd done uh, I was in the my high school uh, drama club uh, and a lesbian society um, I was fortunate to um, through them to go and, and audition for colleges and so I got a, uh, a scholarship to go to attend a school in, in San Diego called United States International University School of Performing and Visual Arts. Mm -hmm. That's a long name. And, um, yeah, so I, I left Detroit with that experience, and then came to San Diego, and, and then did four years there, and got a, a, a Bachelor of Fine Arts in Musical Theater. And I did a number of shows while I was there, including Amos Behaven, Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Forum. I did West Side Story and a number of other musicals um, and, and dance shows and, and various other things. So um, there's where I really probably cut my teeth in, in regard to, to theater. Mm. So basically, before you were casting Power Ranger, you already did lots of lots of stuff, right? Yeah. Well, like, since I was 26, I wasn't a kid. I wasn't like mm, an amateur. I, right. I was already a professional entertainer. You know, yeah. I had done... I'd done that. I'd done. I got my uh, my degree, and I'd done a lot of theater in San Diego. And then I traveled on the cruise ships. I traveled oh. with Princess Cruise Lines for three years as a assistant cruise director and uh, entertainment staff. So I did a number of shows on those ships. On those ships, we did like a fifty show. It was musical, mm. all musical stuff, like generally musical stuff. Right. We did a, a music show. Uh, we did a fifty show. We did. A musical show that where we did segments from different musicals, including Phantom of the Opera, Cats, West Side Story, and various other things. We had an international show that we did. We had a 40 show. Mm -hmm. We did a London pub show, which, which was like, you know, games and, and fun stuff and, and mm -hmm. poetry and, you know, just, it was fun. So I, I was part of the entertainment staff on cruise ships for Princess Cruise Lines, The Love Boat, for three years. I did that. And then I, uh, then I came to LA and decided to give LA a shot. Wow! So you already had so much experience, right? Yeah. As a, as an actor, entertainer, and they also like very well trained. Do you think like the actor today compared to the actor back to you, like the the time you guys were, like that time you guys has more like professional training, right? Lots of actor, you did a theater, 
and you went to like in the music arts, did all those training. Nowadays, it's a bit different. Huh? I don't know. I mean, I, I think those those venues still exist for education. Um, people are still doing theater. They're still, you know, mm -hmm. people still work on cruise ships and. And those things that I did are still available for people to do. It just happens to be my journey. Um, but, uh, I mean, then there are people that have been acting and have been on shows that just, you know, jumped into it. Or they study with, like, some, you know, acting troupe or, or group or some great class. Like, you know, you never stop learning. So, uh, I, like, I studied Meisner when I, after I'd done Rangers and I wanted to study more about acting, I went and studied... Mm -hmm. uh, Meisner with Playhouse West out here mm -hmm. in California, and that was that was great. I learned so many different things above the things that I already learned, and so you know, just you you never stop learning. So you, you continue to mm -hmm. to feed yourself and mm -hmm. grow. Yeah, that's part of like actors constantly have to improve yourself, right? Yeah. Mm, so besides like the Black Ranger, the, the this kind of like obviously it's an iconic role you played so what other like character roles you played uh, are some of your favorites in your career mm. um I'm, i've done a number of things i've been a vampire i've been a vampire oh you've been a vampire yeah. oh that sounds like fun <laughs> yeah no that that is fun i've, I've been a vampire hunter mm. i've been uh I've, I've done some some tar star trek stuff i've done uh I worked on Nickelodeon, a show where I was uh, lost in space with a bunch of kids, and I was kind of like the pilot, the captain of a ship mm. called Space Cases. I've done Disney, I've done you know, Paramount, UPN, CBS, I've worked for, for all the networks, basically, and um, I've played a number of characters, everything from good guys to bad guys. I've been, uh, I've been like a... a a CI, I've been a murderer, I've been like all kinds of things. So um, I'm happy that my base was that of a superhero and that somebody that that motivated everybody to be positive. But I'm, it was, it was equally as fun to be a bad guy because those are things that are further away from my person. Mm. You know, so that that character is further away from who I am. But in my lifetime, I've seen a lot of things. I've, I grew up in Detroit, which is not a an easy city to grow up in. Mm. I've seen a lot of dangerous people. I've met dangerous people. I've seen, I've mm. been in dangerous situations. And uh, it's kind of exciting to be able to relive some of that stuff uh, as a character, building a character off of the things that I've gone through in my life, uh, the people that I've known and, and things that I've seen. And even to you know, create characters that I, I have no idea about, but to let my imagination take me in a place and give that character circumstances that make him intriguing. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I heard lots of actors also mention about it. They actually like to play the bad character because mm -hmm. you got to kind of get the sort of like a mentality, psychology of this character. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, we're all motivated by, motivated by different things and you can take, like, you or me or anybody else and given circumstances can change everything about us. Like... You know, there are people that go that would say, I would never hurt someone, I would never kill someone, but you could take that same person and put them in the in the throes of war and fighting for survival, they'll do whatever they have to do. You mm -hmm. know? Um, and in that moment, they might not think that they'd be able to, but then after they've done it, it's like, oh. So given circumstances change everything, and that's the cool part about acting is because you can... You can live under those imaginary circumstances without actually having the experience. Right. I think that's like a fun part of being an actor. You get yeah. to walk in other people's life, yeah. right? Yeah. So you can live multiple lives in your right. in your life, you right? Multiple experiences. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, what are, do you still keep uh, auditioning like yeah. these days? Going I can see to audition for everything. Uh, we, you know, when I can, when I audition, when I'm in town. Um, I audition for television, film, commercial, mm -hmm. voiceover, you know, a little bit of everything. Okay. So this is like a perfect segue. We talk about this, you know, in our industry, obviously, like no matter how big a star you are, whatever, right. rejection, right? Mm -hmm. This is such a, like, you know, not common things for actors. Like for you, how do you handle rejection? I'm sure like, you know, uh, you, you, you face the rejection, right? 
like for well, you, of course, yeah. like as over and actor, over, again, yeah. over and over, right? Yeah. So like, how do you handle that? Like, you know, how do you stay like a positive? Obviously, like I mean, you had a great career, very successful. Like you played one of the most iconic character. Um, like, do you feel like you know you played that character and then for so many years and later on, you get to still have to go to audition, face rejection. Like, what is your like mentality to deal with those kind of journey? Um, it is difficult um, because everybody hates rejection. But um,、mm -hmm. you know, I think as you grow ex in experience, you learn that、um, you know everything comes at ebbs and tides. You know, there's waves. It's like sometimes、mm -hmm. you're up, sometimes you're down.、Um, you know.、Uh, Nobody enjoys rejection. Nobody enjoys feeling like you know, they they put their heart into their craft and they they put it out there for it to be looked upon as not enough, you know. But it, there's so many. I think what you what you discover, what you learn is there's so many different things that go into whether or not you get the job, because there's one job. There's one job. There's like thousands of actors. There's like、mm -hmm. actors everywhere. You know, like it's not just Los Angeles, but you know they might be having auditions in New York and Chicago and various other places.、Mm -hmm. Not only one person is going to get that role, but then you have to consider that it might not even be your talent that didn't get you the role. It might be how tall the other person is that they really love or that they are locked into because. The investors are saying we have to use this girl because this girl is my 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 brother's niece, and I'm the, the I'm putting the money in for the movie or the TV show, so I want her to be in it. And then she's like super tall, and I'm super short, and it just doesn't work. You just、mm -hmm. don't know. Like you don't know what goes into it, what why you don't get it, and and there's not often an explanation. I mean, I it used to be that. Agents would casting directors would go. It was great. We love what you did. We just went a different way, and that was、mm. something you got.、Uh, eventually, you don't even give feedback anymore. You just、mm -hmm. go. Hope you got it, and if you get it, you get it. If you don't get it, you don't get it. And sometimes you get it and don't get it. You know, it's like、mm. I did、um, audition for a commercial once. I forget what company it was for.、Um, it was a restaurant, and. I went in and I did my audition, and they were. It was a quick turnaround, so I got a call back for the next day. Went back and did my call back. I met with like the the producers、mm -hmm. or the network, or whatever, and、um, and everyone was like, "You're great. We love it. Okay, cool. So we're gonna hire you." They I signed a contract, went through my agents and everything, and then I got to the shoot, and there was、uh, my shoot was my call was in the afternoon. That's because they were shooting somebody else in the morning. And in this commercial, I was the main guy, but when I got there in the morning, they were already shooting the the commercial with a different cast.、Um, my counterpart, the guy that was playing the same part as me, was a white guy,、mm -hmm. and so they they were doing the commercial with him, and then they they wrapped him. He was done, and then they did it with me, and then when the commercial came out, it was him. He was the primary person, and they just had a small piece of me in the commercial.、Mm -hmm. So it was like. Oh, I would thought it was hard to be the main guy, and then at the end of the day, I don't know what happened. It was it wasn't necessarily my talent. It was the decision, or maybe the network was decision. If somebody else went, I think this is gonna be what we need the most, and so that's what worked. So I mean, yeah, it's difficult. Rejection is is very difficult to deal with, but you kind of have to just get used to it because that's what this industry is. It's like. Yeah, because sometimes you just have to、uh, see like the big picture from. It's not about you. Like you are not the,、uh, you know, the reason, right? Right. Maybe right. it's other reasons、uh, they decided to, to go that way. Like yeah, could yeah. be. Yeah, I heard like people talk about the situation you were in. I said they were cast as main main characters, but after the post production, they're like, oh, why they cut out? Yeah, they cut the, out my part. Or, or they, yeah, you just don't know. Yeah. I mean, but there's so many, like again, there's so many different things. You you when it comes to advertising, then you know there are algorithms and and various other things that people utilize. There are voices of many people that have lots of things to say, and in the end, the final product is 
what was a creation of many people and not just the vision of one person. Yeah, because actor are just like one small puzzle in yeah. this big pictures, right? right? Yeah. So, like, what are, why would it be your dream, like, role? Do you also, like, and nowadays lots of actors start to create their own thing, mm -hmm. right? Do you kind of got into the same kind of boat, like, create your own project, doing your own thing I, as well? I, I do consider doing that. I'm working on some, some things. Uh, um, on some different projects as far as being a producer of some of my own content, mm -hmm. my own things that I want to create. Um, I would say, you know, people go, well, what, kind, what would be an ideal role for you? I would love to play an undercover cop. I think that would be mm. great. I would love to play... Like a Beverly Hills cop. <laughs> like Beverly Hills cop, something like that. Yeah, I mean, like, that, right. that was, you know, obviously, Eddie Murphy and it's like a comedy. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think I would love to do something that was a little more dramatic, actually. Mm -hmm. um, like uh, In Too Deep, that that was a movie that was done a while ago. I would have been loved to have been part of that. Or um, uh, what was it, 21 Jump Street, which is, they also made it to a mm -hmm. comedy, but if they did a dramatic version of that, I think I'd be great because I could play young, I could play older, I could play, mm -hmm. you know, I have all these different levels and these different characters that I could play. That, that, that would be fun. Um, you know, Obviously, I, I have no problem being a superhero, so mm. I would love to be put into the Marvel world or something like that. I mean, I, if I could be Wolverine, that would be dope. Yeah, exactly. You know? like, yeah. If there was a world of, like they did with Spider-Verse, with all these multi-varied mm. Spider-Men, if they did that with Wolverine, imagine that, and I could be... Yeah. Wolverine in a different dimension that would be cool yeah because like you are very like a physicality yeah. uh, kind of actor right yeah you need to like kind of got into that like, physicality of that character yeah. so getting into Marvel is, is going to be great because you are already in the Power Ranger hopefully yeah like, yeah I think I think only something like that would be would change the vision of me and the fans minds I mean I'm always going to be a Power Ranger I don't think that anything <clears throat> will surpass, surpass that unless mm -hmm. it was something like a Marvel character. If I mm -hmm. if I became the Black Panther, if I became, you know, a Wolverine character in a different dimension, that would be on par, I think, with Power Rangers. But not maybe not with the same uh the same um what's the word? Impact. Cause Power Rangers definitely had impact outside of what Fame, outside of fame, the impact that was felt from Power Rangers is mm -hmm. is what makes Power Rangers so amazing. Because you know, to be in forty countries, a number of different languages, and and you know, a a role model for three generations. That is, yeah, and the time is told. You know, keep going. Yeah, the the, the time that it stood by has been like mm -hmm. pretty hard to beat. Yeah, I guess this journey continues, right? I this mean, journey continues, yes. Yeah. So do you ever get tired of people always, th you know, see you as p Black Power Ranger? Or, like, you never, right? No, not really. I mean, it's always with love. Nobody's ever like, Black Ranger. You know, it's like, you mm -hmm. know, everybody's like, oh, my God. So uh, with that being said, I'm always greeted with love in general. Mm -hmm. And um, I love that. Yeah, it's it's just like this kind of character will never, kind of never age like you said. It's just like you, right? Yeah. Like kind of like from every generation, like people from like that man, your Gen Z or millennial people always know this character, and they keep remaking, remaking yeah. this new Power Ranger, right? Um, so um, one fun questions, uh, like before we end this, normally I will ask my guests, if you can only pick one food to eat for the rest of your lifetime what would it be <laughs> one food to eat for the rest of my lifetime what would it be well uh i would say chicken it's the one <laughs> thing i never get tired of i mean yeah. i love i love fried chicken i love baked chicken i love you mm -hmm. know i love all the different ways the chicken is prepared. I love chicken fried rice i love chicken you know like mm -hmm. so the chicken i think is is palatable it's not heavy. Um, it's it's just enjoyable. I, I love I love all the iterations of chicken. I mean, I think about beef because I also like steak, but I don't want steak every day. Mm, too it's, heavy. It's too heavy. Yeah. yeah. Right. I, I I like lamb or uh, I like lamb, but I don't want that taste every day. I mean, I don't want chicken every day, but 
Mm-hmm. You can dress chicken in so many different ways. I mean, like, you got lemon pepper chicken, you got spicy chicken, you got, you know, mm. so many ways to do chicken. So yeah. I would say chicken. Fried chicken, right. So do Not you... fried chicken, chicken in general. Just chicken in yes. general, yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, chicken is protein, right? It's protein, yeah. Yeah. And I need that. Right. You must eat healthy then. Uh, I, I've grown to eat healthier because I mm. didn't used to, I used to eat whatever I wanted to, but mm. now I do intermittent fasting and I try to eat um, I try to cut out on cut or at least stay low on sugars and carbs and mm-hmm. uh, you know those kind of things. Um, yeah, so I try to eat healthy. I, you know, I try not to eat red meat all the time, but mm-hmm. I can I can eat but it when I want to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, chicken's better. So, do you still work out daily? Like try try to keep it. I know. don't work out daily. I I probably work out three times a week. But I, mm. I work out in some form or fashion, rather. Mm. It might be I, I went out dancing, and I dance mm. from, like, I dance four hours, you know. Because I'll go out and start dancing at four, and I'll dance till two. So I'll, I'll do that. And I'll dance hard, and I'm, dan- I'm sweating. I got, you know, wiping stuff on my brow. Mm. But um, uh, I will do that. I also go to the gym from time to time, so. And yeah. also do martial arts as well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Keep get like, as actor, right? Keep like yeah, like, it's uh, gotta stay instrument keep going. Keep myself mobile, right? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, what are um, before we end this? Do you have anything to plug? Do you have any project coming up? Uh, I am currently working on developing a comic book, which is exciting. Oh, um, that I may be doing with Boom Comics. I'm excited about that. Um, I am uh, up for a film, a horror film. Sounds really interesting. Um, I'm going over the script now as we speak, and um, I am hoping to get on Dance with the Stars. So yeah, I think you would be perfect for that. Awesome. Look, if you want to see me on Dance with the Stars, hashtag Walter E. Jones Dance with the Stars. Let's let's let them know. Let's let them know you want to see me out there. That'd be great. And I'm also working on a music project under the name Trey Emmanuel. I released ah. my first song. It's called Dance. It's on all the. Um, different medias, um, but it's under the name Trey Emanuel, T R E Trey Emanuel, E M A N U E L. Um, if you need to get more information about any of these projects, you can follow my Instagram at Walter E. Jones and uh, my Facebook and my TikTok and uh, all those things. Walter E. Jones, you can find me there, and uh, I look forward to having you uh, have you on board. Thank you, and we need to start campaign for you, uh, Dancing with the Stars. Yes, let's go. Let's get yeah, I want to see you on that as well. I want to see that too. Yeah, thank you, Water. You're very to welcome. Being here. Pleasure. Yeah, it's like it's uh, it's so great. I mean, come on, you are like you know Black Ranger. You got to show me how to parallel parking. I'm sure that's a <laughs> superpower there. I can never do go. that. <laughs> but I'm glad that you. I think you did a good job. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank glad you to have you. All right. Special guests coming in to interview, and the studio's a force that's baby blue. Yeah, we got the green light.